Mercedes's weekend at Austin is one they'd definitely want to erase from memory, given the series of setbacks they faced throughout the sprint, qualifying, and the race itself. What initially began with promise during Friday's practice, where George Russell nearly clinched the sprint pole, rapidly took a nosedive. Russell's performance faltered during the sprint, while Lewis Hamilton, fighting his own battles, only managed to scrape into sixth. Then came the true disaster in Grand Prix qualifying. Hamilton, in an unexpected turn of events, failed to escape Q1 for the first time at this circuit. On the other hand, Russell was holding on to sixth place in Q3, but all his hopes came crashing down, literally, when he sent his W15 into the barriers at turn 19. That wreck brought out the red flag and ended the session with hardly any time left on the clock. Things got worse overnight as Russell's car, Rebuild, violated curfew regulations, forcing him to start the Grand Prix from the pit lane. It was a series of unfortunate events that no one saw coming. For Hamilton, the circuit of the Americas has traditionally been a strong venue, where he had never started outside the top five until now. After penalties shuffled the grid, Hamilton found himself moved up to 17th, but the weekend had more unpleasant surprises in store. Just one lap into the race, Hamilton lost control and crashed at the same corner Russell did in qualifying, abruptly ending his day. His race was over before it even got started, leaving fans and Mercedes alike in shock. It was a bitter pill for the seven-time world champion to swallow, considering the optimism he and the team had coming into the weekend. Meanwhile, over on the other side of the Mercedes garage, George Russell was on a recovery mission. Starting from the pit lane after the curfew violation, Russell showed grit and determination, carving his way up the field to an impressive sixth place finish. It was an excellent recovery drive, but it also added an element of irony to the weekend. Russell's final overtake was on none other than Sergio Perez. Red Bull's second driver was once again a subject of scrutiny, with his performance raising more questions about the team's driver pairing. Perez's inability to deliver consistent results has now pushed him down to eighth place in the driver's standings, 17 points behind Russell, with the gap between him and the top pack widening. If Perez continues to struggle, Red Bull's dominance could face cracks sooner than expected. Toto Wolff, never one to shy away from voicing his opinion, had plenty to say after the race. Surprisingly, most of his post-race comments weren't about Mercedes's own struggles, but rather about the FIA's handling of track limits enforcement. Wolf made it clear that he was frustrated with what he viewed as inconsistent rulings throughout the weekend. This wasn't the first time Wolf had taken issue with the stewards, but his grievances were amplified after such a challenging race for Mercedes. However, the weekend wasn't just tough for Mercedes. Over at McLaren, things fell apart almost from the start. Lando Norris, full of hope for a strong finish, had his day ruined almost immediately when Max Verstappen muscled his way up the inside at turn one, forcing Norris wide and giving Ferrari's Charles Leclerc the perfect opportunity to snatch the lead. It was a high-speed chess match, and McLaren found themselves outplayed in the opening moves. The incident kicked off a heated debate over the legality of Verstappen's aggressive move at Turn 1. However, the FIA, following its standard policy of being more lenient during the opening lap of a race, decided not to penalise Verstappen. It was deemed a first lap, first corner incident, and the stewards chose to let it slide. As the race progressed, though, another incident between Verstappen and Norris raised eyebrows. Late in the race, with Norris hot on Verstappen's heels, the Brit attempted an overtake at turn 12, but the move saw him run off track. This time, the stewards were not as forgiving as they had been at turn 1, penalising Norris with a five-second penalty for gaining an advantage off track. The penalty sparked outrage and confusion, as it seemed to contradict the FIA's earlier leniency. The situation left many, including the drivers, questioning the consistency of the FIA's rulings. Norris, despite pulling off a clean overtake on Verstappen was unable to build the necessary five-second gap to negate the penalty. By the time the race concluded, the penalty was applied and Norris was dropped behind Verstappen, costing him a potential podium finish. Watching all of this unfold from the pit wall was a visibly frustrated Toto Wolff. During the cool-down lap, George Russell, still digesting the weekend's events, asked over the radio whether Verstappen had received a penalty for his turn one antics. Wolff, his irritation evident, responded, no, he didn't get a penalty but Lando did for being forced off and overtaking on the outside. Seems like a bit of biased decision-making to me. The frustration wasn't limited to just Russell's question. Wolf continued to vent during his post-race interview with Sky F1. It's inconsistent, Wolf fumed. We saw Valtteri and others in similar situations during the sprint with no penalties, yet here we are with penalties that don't seem to follow the same logic. The inconsistency Wolf referred to is something that's been on the minds of many team principals throughout the season. There have been 
multiple instances where rulings seemed contradictory, or where leniency was applied in one scenario but not in another. I think we all know why, Wolf hinted with a grin, careful not to say too much on live television but implying that there might be more going on behind the scenes. When asked if he believed the stewards were being overly strict, Wolf didn't back down, saying, Sometimes there are correlations when decision making gets interesting. Wolf wasn't alone in his criticism of the FIA over the weekend. McLaren's Zach Brown had also been stirring the pot, pushing for more scrutiny on Red Bull in what's now being referred to as Bib Gate. The issue revolves around allegations that Red Bull may have been manipulating their car's ride height by using the bib in park for May, which would be a clear violation of the rules. Brown has gone as far as to call for senior Red Bull figures to sign affidavits confirming that they've never used the bib to gain an advantage. It's a bold demand, and one that has added more tension to an already contentious season. On the subject of contentious weekends, Lewis Hamilton's early exit from qualifying remains one of the biggest shocks of the USGP. Hamilton, who has been remarkably consistent at Cota over the years, found himself eliminated in Q1 due to a damaged front suspension. The issue, which was traced back to contact during the sprint, compromised his performance and left him stranded in 19th on the grid, his worst qualifying result of the season. Despite the team's best efforts to rectify the damage before qualifying, the car's balance remained unpredictable, and Hamilton struggled to extract any meaningful pace from his W15. Following his Q1 exit, Hamilton opened up about the suspension issues, explaining that the front suspension failure had occurred as early as the formation lap in the sprint. Despite the team's adjustments, the car's behaviour remained erratic, leaving him fighting a losing battle throughout qualifying. It was awful, Hamilton said after the session. The car felt great on Friday, so I was optimistic for qualifying, but once that suspension issue cropped up, it was all downhill. Given the car's unpredictable handling and lack of grip, Hamilton even suggested that starting from the pit lane might have been the smarter option. Starting from the pit lane would have allowed Mercedes to make further adjustments to the car, free from the constraints of Parc Ferme, potentially giving Hamilton a more competitive car for the race. However, instead of taking that route, Mercedes opted to start him from 19th on the grid, and the rest, as they say, is history. Mercedes' struggles at the USGP painted a picture of a team that couldn't catch a break, whether it was suspension failures, penalties or crashes. The frustration was palpable, not just for the drivers, but for Toto Wolff as well. With Wolff calling out what he described as biased decision-making by the stewards, it raises the question, do you believe there's inconsistency in how penalties are enforced across teams? Was Wolff justified in his criticism of the FIA, or are these just the frustrations of a tough weekend? Let us know in the comments. Until next time, goodbye for now.